Good morning, everyone. Welcome to join the session. Uh, I'm James, and this is S Y. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, how we implement the secure storage in in RT. Okay. And this is today's agenda. Uh, I will go through the overview and the key manager section, and S Y will talk about the. Atomic operation and the future work. Yeah. Uh, this slide, I will uh, give a brief introduce of our secure storage system architecture. Yeah, and uh, as we know, uh, in uh, um, uh, um, processor, we have the uh, uh, two world. One is a uh, normal world, another is secure world. The RT is always is a uh, secure OS uh, running in secure world. And currently, uh, the RT uh, provide the global platform uh, API for the uh, trusted application running in uh, the secure world. Uh, the, yeah. And if you want to uh, use, uh, if you want to access the, uh, want to store uh, some uh, file or data, you can use the global platform trusted storage API to handle those objects. And in global platform uh, API, they define two kinds of uh, objects. One is uh, transient object. There is uh, temporary keep kept in secure memory, and if the trusted application is closed or object is closed, the data will will gone. And another one is the persistent object. Uh, the the the, the persistent persistent object will kept in uh, the secure storage, and uh, you can use those uh, those data. Uh, at next time uh, when you run in the trusted application, yeah. So in a uh, secure world kernel space, uh, we have implemented a, a trusted storage service layer to handle these two kinds of objects. So for the trans transient object, uh, it only handle in the service layer and will not go down to other component. Uh, if, you, uh, if the object is a persistent object, the service layer will handle those objects through our uh, TE file system. Yeah. So we, we will implement a simple file system in uh, secure, uh, in secure work kernel space. But uh, currently, the persistent object is uh, in RT implementation. We are stored uh, those persistent object in normal world file system. Uh, right now, we we development using uh, in Linux environment. So the normal world operating system is Linux. So you can imagine that the persistent object is keep in Linux file system in some folder, yeah. And for, in order to uh, simplify the trusted storage service implementation, so we provide a TE file operation interface, uh, which, is, uh, which is similar to the POSIS like file system API, yeah. So in, uh, in RTOS kernel layer, we can call open rewrite to do the, uh, to do the file operation. Yeah. And uh, how, how the TE file system uh, to uh, access the, the real file in uh, real data in normal world. Uh, in RT, we we implement a T subsequent that is a normal world user space uh, daemon. Yeah. And 
the T subplicand uh, can communicate communicate with the TE file system by the remote procedure call. Yeah. So when TE file system want to uh, access the data in normal world, it will send the uh, RPC message to TE subplicand to handle those those objects. Okay. And uh, in T fast and because our uh, data is stored in a non-secure storage, so we need to uh, do the encryption before we store that data in, in the normal world. So we need a key measure to help us to do this. And uh, another uh, uh, important feature in TE file system is uh, the we support atomic operation for for the up, object data update. If we uh, if the if you want uh, try to write some data to the object or modify the data content, if something wrong, uh, we should go go back to previous state of the object, yeah. So today we will focus on the key manager and the atomic operation. And in global platform spec, there are some requirement for the trusted storage. So uh, when we design the secure storage, we should keep those requirement in mind and to make sure we have aligned with those requirements requirement yeah and first one is uh, we must bound, be bounded to a particular de device that this means uh, uh, we cannot access an object in another device if the object is created by 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 the uh, by a device okay okay so the object only can be accessed uh, where they created at those devices. Uh, the next one is uh, we should guarantee the confidentiality and the integrity of the data. Uh, this means we should do, uh, because we store the data in an unsecure storage, so we should do the encryption and the, when we access the object, we should do some integrity check on the object. Yeah. And next one is we should provide the uh, atomic operation so that we, sh we can make sure the, uh, the object is always uh, valid, even the, uh, some of the object operation is failed. And we should have the ability to hide the sensitive key uh, from the TA. So we provide a key manager in the TE file system. Yeah. And for each TA, we should provide a separate uh, storage space for that TA. That means an uh, 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 object created by one TA cannot be visit, vis visible or accessible by another TA. And this one is uh, we should provide a mechanism to detect the rollback attack. Uh, let me, uh, some attacker might, because uh, our object is stored in normal world, so some attacker may be back up the, uh, the, uh, the object. And after we update some, uh, we update those object, you will uh, re, recover the object to the previous state. And this should be some attack. Uh, we, we should prevent those kind of attack. Uh, but we are not done this yet. Uh, this is our future work. And in previous slide, uh, we, we will mention we provide a, a TE file operation interface just 
like uh, POSIS file system API. Yeah. And this slide we will show uh, how we, uh, what the file structure and how is, how a persistent object will be represented in the normal world file system. Uh, first one, uh, we provide a separate folder for each trusted application. So in, in normal world file system, we have a folder called slash data slash te, and under that folder we will create a, 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 t, a, a TF, uh, a folder for each of the TA. Because, uh, for each trusted application, they, uh, they have a UUID, a unique ID. So we use the, the ID as the folder name. Yeah. And for each object belong to the trusted application, we will create a folder for that object and uh, using the object ID. The object ID is uh, provided by TA. You can, uh, the, the object ID you can see, uh, this is equal to the TE file name, yeah. And uh, the, uh, this is, uh, you can imagine that this is a, a persistent object. And uh, actually how we store the persistent object is uh, we, we use, uh, we, we have a meta file in the, under the object ID folder to describe uh, some, uh, to describe some information for the uh, T file. And uh, we have uh, several block files to store the actual content stored in the persistent object. Yeah. And for now, the, uh, the meta file is uh, always encrypted but the block file is optionally encrypted. You can change the, change the setting by the compile time flag. And I think uh, we should enforce the encryption of all the data stored in normal world, but this is option because uh, some, someone, uh, somebody may need, the, need to debug their trusted application so you can Dis disable the uh, uh, in encryption option, yeah. But in, I think in production, in, in production environment, we should force to enable this option. Yeah. And this is the uh, default uh, size uh, we, we we configure in our uh, source code. Uh, for now, the, for each block, uh, the maximum block uh, file size is uh, four, 4K byte. This means if you are persistent object, uh, data size is over 4K byte, we will create a new block file to store your persistent object data. And the default maximum number of brackets is uh, 1,024, yeah. So the uh, maximum T file, a, a T file is a four megabyte, yeah. And this, can, this is configurable, yeah. And next session we will uh, go, go through the detail of the key manager, yeah. And the, uh, the, the key, key manager responsibilities uh, to provide a file encryption and decryption function. And uh, should be responsible for do some key management, yeah. So in T file system, there are two 
two kinds of uh, sensitive key material should be uh, man should be handled in key manager only and should not be visible outside the key manager. Uh, one is a secure storage key, and another another one is a file encryption key. The se secure storage key is a per device key, so we can use the key to make sure the persistent object cannot be accessed by another device. And this is the the key is uh, used. Used for the to uh, use for uh, file encryption key encryption and the decryption. Uh, that is, uh, we we use the secure storage key to protect our file encryption key. And uh, later we will show how we store the file encryption key in in normal world file system. So. Because uh, for each of the TE file, we should generate a file encryption key for the for the TE file, and the file encryption key will be stored in the meta file of the uh, TE file. So before before that, we should encrypt the file encryption key by the secure storage key. And by the way, the secure storage key is uh, generated and uh, will be kept in secure memory when when the device is boot. Thank you. So is that secure storage key per device, is that linked to a a root key on the device for root of trust? You mean a uh, root key? You're the SSK key, yeah. is that ultimately linked to a root key on the device for to maintain the hardware root of trust? The idea is that you uh, derive the, the secure storage key based from some kind of hardware unique key or something, which yeah. usually is available. Yeah. Then they, they're randomly generated and then they are encrypted using this SSK. Next slide, uh, we will show uh, how the how these two type of key will be will be generated. For the secure storage key, uh, we use the HMAC SHA-256 to, to uh, generate the secure storage key. And the, the, key, <laughs> the key for the HMAC is uh, how a unique key. And the data, the input data to HMAC is uh, is the chip ID uh, concatenate with the static string, and and for the file encryption key, this is uh, generated generated by a pseudo random number generator. Uh, the for now the default pseudo random number generator uh, is the Fortuna. And this uh, implemented in the live tongue crypt. Yeah. And the how we how we how we get the how we unique key and the chip ID is uh, depend depend on the platform porting layer. So you can implement your own function to return the return your hardware unique key and the chip ID. And the static string is uh, because uh, we, we may have uh, uh, several subsystems in APT in future. Right now only, only have a secure storage subsystem. 
and in, in the future we may have uh, several subsistence, so we should avoid other, other subsistence to generate the same per device key. So uh, we can choose different static string for different subsystems. Um, just, uh, you use the HMAC function to derive um, the SSK. Yeah. You could also use AES to derive the uh, SSK. Was there any uh, specific reason why you choose HMAC function to derive the key? Or? Uh, I think uh, this, mm, this should be a, a performance I think this uh, performance consideration, so okay. we just choose, we, we did not use the key derivation function to derive the, another key. We just use uh, a fast way to generate a unique key for the subsystem. And next, we will show uh, how we how we encrypt the metadata and uh, show the format of the meta file. Uh, right now, the metadata is uh, encrypted by using the AES GCM mod, and we we should uh, generate a meta. IB the initial vector for the AES GCM. And right now the default IB length is uh, 96 bits. Yeah. And the key for the AES GCM to encrypt the metadata is uh, FEK, file encryption key. So uh, after do the encryption, uh, ASGCM will output the uh, encrypt, encrypted metadata and the uh, attack. Uh, so we, we will store the encrypted metadata tag and the meta IV in the meta file. Also, uh, we need to uh, store the FEK in meta file also. But before, before that, we should encrypt the FEK. So we use the SSK as the key and using the ASECB mode to, to encrypt the FEK, then store in meta file. Yeah. And because we should make, make sure the integrity of whole meta file, so we should, uh, uh, the encrypted FEK should be as an uh, input parameter and for the ASGCM to calculate the tag also. So we can verify the whole meta file by, by the tag to make sure the meta file will not be uh, tempered by another unauthorized user. Yeah. And this show uh, our metadata uh, data structure. So right now we have the data length and the backup version table. Uh, the backup version table is uh, used for the atomic operation. That's why we we'll go through the detail for the backup version table. And the block data encryption is similar to the meta data encryption. So we, the same, we use the ASGCM mode to encrypt the block data. And also we, we, sh we need to gener generate a block, block IV for the block data encryption. And the FEK is uh, come from the meta file because uh, each time when we open the TE file, 
we should uh, open and read the meta file first. And when we get the encrypt encrypted FEK, we will use the SSK to do the decryption. So we can get the FEK, then we can do the encryption and the decryption of the block file. So this is the format of uh, one block file. Yeah. Okay. And next SY will go through the atomic operation. Hi, I am SY and I will cover the following two sessions. Uh, the first, I will show you uh, how we extend our current information to support atomic update, and the other is future work. First of all, I, will, I would like to show you what is atomic update. Uh, simplified speaking, uh, if something goes wrong when, when you are doing update, and you need to roll back to the old version, so either a successfully update or no change has been made. This is atomic update. To achieve this, uh, you can think we cannot directly modify the file content. Also, <coughs> because if something goes wrong, you are unable to recover. So <coughs> we should use out of place update instead. That is, we make a copy of the original file and make update to that copy. And after you make sure the copy, the update is completed, then you remove the original file. And so how do, how do we extend our implementation to support out of play update? Uh, for both meta and black file, uh, we create another attribute called backup version. Backup version could be zero or one. And if you see the meta tag one, it means the meta file is tagged with backup version one. And if you see the block 10 tag zero, it means the block 10 is tagged with backup version zero. And we toggle the backup version uh, each time when we up, want to update data. So for example, if you are currently using the backup version zero, after update, it will become the version one, and then version zero, and so on and so forth. Uh, let's take an example. Uh, if you want to update to data dot zero, uh, you need to create a copy and write data here. Uh, after you make sure the write is completed, then you remove the data dot zero. Uh, similarly, if you want to update to data dot one, you should create a copy, update, and remove. So we should follow in the rule uh, to update our meta and block file, or if something wrong, we cannot recover. So how do we keep track of uh, the current backup version we are referring to? Uh, for example, if you want to read data from block zero, uh, how do you know you should read from the backup zero or backup one? So we introduce a, a version table in our metadata, uh, which is used to keep track the current, <coughs> current version of each block. Uh, in this example, we have version table 011, and this means we have block 0 dot 0, block 1 dot 1, and block 2 dot 1. Uh, the meta file itself also takes with uh, meta, uh, the backup version, but uh, we don't have extra storage to store the backup version of meta file. So uh, we will try both where we open a TE file. Ideally, on we will only one meta file exist. 
in the, in the rest of the session, uh, I will show you uh, how we implement each operation that is, uh, uh, that is required to be atomic uh, in GP standard. Uh, that is write, truncate, rename, and create, delete. Uh, before we start, uh, I will show you a general rule uh, we made to do a do an atomic operation. So we should follow the step to do loss operations. Uh, we split the update operation into three stages. Uh, if we failed in the first two stages, the operation is failed, and then we should roll back to original version. And if we failed at the third, third stage, uh, the operation is considered success and the, the error will be ignored. So the first stage is out of place update stage. In this stage, we will do out of place update to our block files. So if you failed in this stage, uh, your original data can be recovered. Uh, the, first, the second stage is a critical stage uh, because after this stage, the new T file will become valid and the OT file will become invalid. Uh, in this stage, we will do the out of place update to our meta file. And after this stage, uh, the new file is, is become valid. So in the third stage, we need to remove the outdated the block that is referred by the old meta file because the old meta file is invalid. Uh, you may ask if we fail in one of the three stages, uh, we might end up with some garbage block or data file. Uh, in, uh, in many cases, we are able to clean them up, but if uh, in some cases, uh, just like uh, suddenly shut down, and we have no chance to uh, clean those garbage. So one thing is to implement a tool in secure world. Uh, let's, scan, let's scan all the files under the T object folder and to release those invalid block and meta file. Uh, the idea is similar to the FSCK for Linux file system. So if your Linux distribution detect an abnormal power cycle, uh, you will force to do the file system check before you mount your root file system. Okay, so let's go through each, each update step by step. Uh, the first is write operation. So if you want to do the write operation, you should make a copy of meta in memory. Then we will start to do the out of place update to our block file. In this example, we will write 20 bytes to block zero. We should also modify the backup version for in the version table. And then we write 20 bytes to the, the copy. The, after the write, we commit the new data file and we remove the old, data, the old meta. Then finally, we, re, we clean up the outdated block. At least finish the atomic write operation. For truncate, it is similar. Uh, we should create a copy of meta file. Then we update the file length from 1.5 kilobytes to 500 bytes. This means uh, from the meta one's point of view, the block one is outdated. Then we commit the new meta file and remove the old meta file. And finally, we will remove the outdated block one. Uh, for the rename operation, uh, maybe the simplest way to do this is we make a copy for all files uh, from OT object to the new T object. And then we delete all files in all T object. But this is too time consuming to do this. So we use Harlink instead. First of all, we will create 
the hiring for each block from old T file to new T file. Then we will create the hiring from meta file. Then remove the old meta file. And finally, we will remove the outdated block file and the, the folder. The last operation is create, create and delete. Uh, for create, uh, it is equivalent to we create a meta file with file length zero. So if we can create a meta file and enter, it is successful right to our storage, then we are done. But if we are unable to, to do this, then no file will be created. So the file, the operation itself is atomic. Uh, for delete operation, we split the operation into two stage. The first stage, we will do the atomic rename uh, from the target file name to the target file name dot trace. And after this step, the operation is completed. And then we should just remove the files under the file name dot trace. So this, this is for the atomic update session. Then I will describe uh, our future work. Uh, the first is uh, we want to buy uh, the TE file to a TA. Uh, as it is described in the prior, previous slide, then the GP standard requires each, each TA has its own, uh, its own private storage space. Uh, we fulfill this requirement by we create a folder for each TA and we store all the uh, the object of that TA in the TS folder. Uh, but because we store those files in rich, <coughs> rich OS file system, then an attacker may able to copy the, an object from TA1's folder into TS2's folder and then open those object using TA2. And this, is, this cannot be detected by our implementation. Uh, a simple way to solve this is we buy some TS information into T files meta file. For example, we can use the TS UUID. So if we do this, uh, when you open a T file, you should match the UUID in the meta file with the current TA. If that matches, uh, we can make sure the T file is actually created by the current TA. And the other is rollback attack detection. Uh, because we store our T files in normal file system, an attacker might be able to back up an object and restore in the future. Because the backup T file is also valid, so we, uh, we are unable to detect such kind of attack. Uh, the solution is we need to add additional uh, version number in the meta file, as well as another safe place. So we store a version, num version number in meta file and in another place. Uh, when, you, when we want to open a T file, we should match the version number in in the meta file, as well as the version number in the safe place. The safe place should be safe enough and cannot be uh, modified by the attacker. So if we can make sure the two version match, then we can make sure uh, the, there is no rollback attack. Uh, in GP standard, it, uh, it provides two, two kinds of protection level. One is 100 and one is 1,000. Uh, so if you, you enable protection level 100, you can treat, you can store the, the information in the normal file system. But I think this is not safe because uh, the safe place itself uh, can be also rollback attacked. 
The other is we can store the the right counter on the RPMB partition in ENC device. Okay, that's our presentation. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, uh, if you has, you are welcome to ask question. So when you're securely writing all these blocks to memory, um, how much overhead is there? Is there been, I, I, I assume all this code has gone up to, to GitHub at this point, and I, I guess people are probably analyzing the performance. Uh, we have, yeah, we have analyzed the performance, but uh, we, we did not analyze uh, the, the overhead. We split a file into blocks. We did not, analyze the performance uh, between we store the old information in one file and we split those into blocks. We did, we did not analyze this, but we have analyzed uh, the performance uh, with and without block encryption. So is there, yeah. know, how would you optimize or improve what kind of steps could you take if you had to improve the performance? Uh, we have quite bad, bad performance in, the, in this first implementation, of, so we, we are trying to figure out how to optimize it. So this is uh, our benchmark uh, for in, with block encryption and without block encryption. And currently we get uh, we get very, <coughs> very low speed uh, for byte by byte read and write, as you see here. Uh, but uh, we are currently work on a block cache, so we we keep uh, some some blocks uh, in T OS memory, so uh, this may able to improve the read speed. Thank you. Is, it, is, is this EMMC or what, what's the underlying storage? No. No. <laughs> yeah. Or what are you going to support as well? Uh, pardon? So, so what's the underlying storage mechanism and what are your plans for different kinds of storage? Different. Media? So your question was if we are using EMMC for the storage. Yeah. Uh, no, we're using the flash in the normal world user space. And uh, as, as I mentioned, one of the things on the to-do list is connected with RPMB. So in that case, we're going to use EMMC. But one of the big challenges and one of the reasons why we have this quite bad performance is that we are constantly going back and forth between normal world and, and secure world all the time, all the time. So. Uh, that's why you had one, some idea of okay. caching operations. You can do s many operations with fewer calls and so on. So, yeah. uh, Maybe the most efficient way to do this is uh, we implement a true file system in secure world on the RPMB partition. Uh, but the RPMB partition is usually very small, so we are unable to st store many data on it. So in our our design, we store the data on the normal file system, and we store the right counter, only right counter on RPMB partition. Yeah, but because we have defined the process like file operation, so maybe we could not support another file system in the future. They can operate directly on the RPMB partition. This might dramatically improve the performance because we do not have to do the RPC call. It, it's a lot of ping pong, so if, if we were able to combine some operations, for instance, we would probably see a huge improvement in, in uh, performance also. 
what, what is the general sense after watching this? That, does it sound sane or do you spot anything strange immediately or? Oh, we got that. Um, so we have, we have a proprietary implementation of this without Opti right now. And I'm just wondering why you have so many file operations needed um, back and forth between the secure and non-secure world. Shouldn't you just need to store your keys in an encrypted file in, in, in Flash and then load them once to the secure world and, and after that you really don't need to access anything in, in, in the file system? Um, I'm just wondering what the end application is here that, that needs all these, app, these accesses. Uh, I think uh, in our implementation, this is a simplified uh, version because we leverage the normal file system to store our data. So we did not implement uh, the actual file system layer in our our uh, TE. So we can't directly up, uh, access to a blocked device. Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering what in the secure world needs all of these file operations? What is the application that actually requires all of this? Uh, so to usually you use those file operation to store keys. Right, so yeah. that's very infrequent. Not very frequent. Right, it's not very frequent. Yeah. So uh, but, but because uh, Let's see, let's see, there is a persistent object uh, operation that, uh, that is required by the GP standard. So we must, we must implement a fire-like uh, fire -like operation to support it. Okay, so, so you have infrequent accesses as well as what I'm, I'm basically asking then. You only do this a, a couple times and then once you load the keys from the file system, you just keep them in the, in the uh, trusted world. Thereafter, you don't keep reading and writing them back and forth. Is, it, is, that, is uh, that correct? Yes, you could say that. I, I mean, what we're implementing here is a required API by a global platform, and then how that API is used, yeah, probably as you say, it will be used to read up a key and, and then yeah. Will not read the so, so going the further step and putting the whole file system in the secure world, I, I don't see that being that valuable, at least for what we use it for. It, it, it could depend on, for instance, if we, we want to protect those files from being attacked. If we store it in RPMB, normal world can't remove the keys or corrupt them. Yeah, yeah. There, there are other ways of storing it, that's yeah, for sure. That's sure. Any further question? Uh, I want to know uh, how do you access the storage device? Do you have a uh, driver in your secure world to no. access the device? No, uh, we, leverage, we leverage the use, user space, uh, the normal warfare system to, to store our data. So, we just open a normal file and write data to it. Oh, okay. Uh, I just want to figure out uh, how many keys you use in, in your whole design. I mean, uh, maybe every key should use uh, different keys, right? Uh, we have one uh, secure storage key, and we have many fire encryption key. One fire encryption key per file. Uh, so that means even some other key can access the data, which uh, do not belong to, which do not belong to them. So, but it doesn't matter because uh, even I can access it, but I don't have the key, so I don't know what it is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, thank you.